Hey Sunshines, well I'm firing some more pottery. Uh, this time I started the pottery from scratch, uh, meaning it wasn't already bisque fired. Um, what I did was I just created a couple of masks. I didn't spend too much time on them because I thought, well these can be my experimental pieces. I let them dry for, I don't know, three days. Um, and then what I did was I put them in the oven first slowly started the temperature on low and then worked up until it was the maximum temperature in the oven which was in our oven it only goes up to 290 uh, degrees I don't know if that is in Fahrenheit but anyway and then I transferred them straight into this the Raku kiln um, and slowly raised the temperature and now it's it's flaming hot as you can see um, I'll just turn it down for a minute. It's been on for about four hours now. Um, and I'll show you how red hot they are. Um, I don't know how much I can show you. Oh, I can't show you in there. The camera won't go down without it being scorched. But you can see how red it is. Um, but those masks in there are like beyond orange so I think I have to do it for about five hours and then just turn it off um, then I'll block it up and let it cool down um, naturally over the next day or so and then hopefully we'll have um, bisque uh, pottery and then if that's the case then I know that I can uh, make my own pottery so I just wanted to show you that quickly. So the next thing I wanted to show you was this artwork that I've started working on. If you remember from the last video I was showing you that I bought uh, this frame that has four panels of glass in it. Um, and I'm creating an artwork with those individual panels um, and I'm building up layers. So look, I've got three layers of grass. Um, I've got a moon there. I've actually got two moons there, but I haven't worked out how they're going to position. I put a crow in there, and then I've got a background. So you really have to sort of construct it like a painting, like foreground, middle ground, and background, and um, try and make them all work together. So it's going to be a real interesting uh, challenge to see to see how I go with that. Um, so I'm sort of creating like this, the grass, and I'm going to probably put some little flowers in somehow, and I will sort of have these moons going up maybe, and then in the middle I'm going to have like, like blackness with stars, and then up here, I don't know what I'm going to have up there, or maybe, uh, probably, maybe I'll have a sunset colours in the middle and then going up to, to black sky. Um, at night with stars and put, I don't know, whatever else. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you the progress of that. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I'm just using my, um, just using transfers, uh, my images and transferring them onto overhead projector film and then spraying the back of them with white spray paint so they, um, you can't see right through them. Um, well, not 100% anyway. So that's that one. So how cool is this? Um, I was just searching through Etsy the other, uh, the other day and um, uh, looking for, you know, gift items for people and all that sort of stuff. And I always like to see what other artists are selling and what's hot and all that sort of thing. So I came across this one site that sells all of this sort of steampunk typed uh, jewellery and stuff. And I was selling this and I just saw it and went oh my god I gotta have it it's absolutely gorgeous so yep I ordered it and look it's even got a door knocker on it that works um, it's actually just a bookmark um, but it's beautiful so I was thinking I'm gonna add it to like a box or something like that in one of my sculptures um, because it's so beautiful and I was thinking oh maybe no maybe I shouldn't I should just keep it like that um, but um, who knows, but I love it. I think it's great. I'm thinking I might even cast it myself in, in um, 
plaster and then take a mould of it so that I can actually um, reproduce it a little bit. Um, but we'll see. But hey, I thought I'd show you. Nice, huh? You want one, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> if you remember, the other day I bought a photo frame and um, I only bought it for one reason because it, this was what was around it. And I wanted to use it as a stencil because I just I just love the pattern. So I've been um, using it. As you can see, it's been used both front and back. And I thought I'd show you some of the cool results from it. As you can see, it's got all these little... Isn't it awesome? Oh, I love that pattern. Um, I love this one. This one's my favourite. Just the... Uh, the awesome patterns on it. So you know, this is my miniature series that I'm working on that I used to... I love doing. I love doing these miniature little artworks and I'm just building up layers and layers and sanding them back until I'm getting the compositions right and then spray painting, you know, my images on top or drawing them or collaging bits onto them. So, you know, these things might have, you know, six or seven layers on them before I'll get to a stage where I think, okay, that's enough layers. Um, I've created some really nice, interesting bits, so let's try and uh, bring it all together. So, yeah, I'll just go show you what you can find and what you use. And um, that's where I am. So I've got a tip for you. If you want to create, like, crackled effects in your paint without actually having to buy, you know, the crackle medium that you can buy and you... You know, you have to put it down, thin coat, and let it dry. Well, no, let it completely dry, and then put your paint over the top, and then it splits. Well, this way um, works really well also, and it's a lot cheaper than buying crackle medium. All you do is you just mix your acrylic paint. Um, I'm using house acrylic paint, water-based. And I'm, all I'm mixing into that is some uh, PVA wood glue. Um, you know that creamy wood glue that you use to join bits of wood together well I'll just mix you know oh, look that that bit there was only I just mixed about a tablespoon into the into the paint wiped it over and then let it dry outside and then it just created all that really cool splitting effect and what it, what's really all good also is it's not gonna flake off or it's not gonna peel because there's that glue binder in there to stop it and um it gives an awesome result. I was looking at, um, well, Amesley Keith. His works are fantastic. If you haven't seen them, they're like, wow. Anyway, I was at um, the Tate Modern oh, a couple of months ago. And um, he had these huge, big glass um, frames. And inside he had these artworks. And they looked like, looked like a desert scene. It was all just made out of sand. And he had all these works were huge big cracks and when I did this I thought oh, I wonder if that's what he did he mixed like sand and acrylic paint together and threw glue in it and made it split because I was wondering how how could that much weight hang you know off off, off the frame um, so anyway yeah I don't know I'm raving on so yeah oh, I thought that was really awesome and um yeah okay guys that's it from me for tonight but over the next couple of days i'll be making um some painting videos starting a new big painting as well as um working on all of the miniature works on paper um i've got some new dvds coming out uh very soon that are going on to my etsy site as well as a bunch of new artworks um and that sort of thing but apart from that have a great week slash end, and I will talk to you soon. Okay. Later.